so I thought it was about time that I did an updated makeup menu and I think we're now on the makeup menu five and so these are just products I'm really enjoying using at the moment and a bit of a breakdown of my current makeup routine and in the autumn I sort of like to slap a bit more on my face I just feel like my skin can hold it a bit more it just doesn't eat the makeup up as much as it does in the summer so there's a few more products here than normal but I'm just going for a very simple base with a touch of blush and then a matte eye so no shimmer on the eye at all and then a very gently patted in either plummy lip or red lip I'm going to give you two options here of two that I'm loving at the moment so I'm going to get started and for that I'm going to use a primer and I've really been getting into this recently it's a little miniature you know I love a good miniature of the Laura Mercier foundation primer in the hydrating formula so I'm just going to apply around a pea sized amount of that all over my face with my fingers and I just find that this is one of those really nice moisture giving primers but it has no shimmer in it a lot of my other more dewy looking primers have a shimmer running through which is why they give that really luminous look to the skin but this one it's water based and it works more as a moisturiser and I just find that whatever I put on top doesn't attach to any dry flakes that I might have going on on my skin and it does help things to last a little bit longer. Then for foundation I'm going to use this from Benefit and this is, I think it's called their Play Stick and I have this in the shade Spin the Bottle. Now it might seem like a bit of a weird option for me because I'm not normally the biggest fan of stick foundations but there's something very nostalgic about this product for me. It's one of the first high-end foundations that I bought when I was younger. I must have been about 16 and I really liked it back then and I've just rediscovered it. The shade match is completely on point for me and it does take a bit of work to get it into the skin. I personally prefer to take a brush onto the top and then to apply it that way but it's got a nice coverage to it, it doesn't look cakey on the skin and actually behaves much like a liquid formula but it's got a nice coverage to it and over the top of the Laura Mercier it blends in really nicely. My skin is just a little bit patchy at the moment from holiday. I've got still kind of like a red, very freckly nose and then also the odd remnants of um, mosquito bites. So I do need something with a bit more coverage in than I would normally use. And the reason why this is good as well is because it sort of doubles up as a concealer. I don't ever put much on the top of it, either on pimples or under my eyes. It may not be the most exciting foundation of the pack, nor is this the most hygienic way of applying it, but sometimes you just want an oldie and a goodie, and I get the same feelings about MAC Studio Finish. Sometimes I just want to paint my face with MAC Studio Finish for old time's sake. So as I said, I'm going to skip concealer and I'm going to move on to the Bourjois Healthy Balance Powder. I have this in the shade 51 Vanille, 52 Vanille. I'm not sure. It's all covered up at the back, but I will pop it in the description box below. And then I'm just going to use the Bobbi Brown Sheer Powder Brush and I'm just dusting this over the centre of my face. Now I probably wouldn't do this if I wasn't filming because this foundation holds in place pretty well but just a bit of shine on camera can sometimes look a little bit greasy so I'm just quickly applying some of this so it'll stay on my face. So for cheeks I'm going the whole hog. Like I said I like to just apply slightly more makeup around autumn time so I'm going for everything. I'm going for the contour, I'm going for the blush, I'm going for the highlight. But I think the first thing I'm going to use, I never really know which way to go with this but I think I'm going to start with the contour and work sort of from the bottom of my cheek up. So I'm going to take the Kevin Aucoin Sculpting Powder in the shade medium and this is a Burberry brush which is quite nice because it's already in that little line that will just fit into the groove of my cheekbones and I'm just going to apply a very light amount of this and what I like to do with contour is if I ever go over the top and I think whoa that looks a bit obvious I just go back over with my foundation brush and blend it in and this is the Bobbi Brown full coverage face brush. I think I'm gonna leave it there although I have just been watching RuPaul's Drag Race so I may have gone slightly overboard with that but that's okay and something very exciting just happened I hit pan in my Kevin Aucoin sculpting powder which is very exciting and very rarely happens so that just shows how much I love that stuff. Then on the cheeks, I'm going to move on with the Tarte Amazonian Clay 12 Hour Blush in the shade Exposed. This is very similar to the NARS shade in Doser. Not sure if that's how you say it, you know the one I mean. It's just a very nice light, dusky, pink, browny taupe colour that just looks very natural on the cheeks. And if ever I'm doing something quite bright on the lips or something quite bold on the eyes, 
this is what I go for because it's one of those non-interfering colours. So I'm just going to take that on the Bobbi Brown sheer powder brush again and take that over the apples of my cheeks for a bit of colour and a bit of warmth. Then for highlighter, I'm going to use the Balm's Mary Luminizer highlighter, which I can now finally see what all the fuss is about with this product. I've done a review on it, actually titled, Now I Can See What All The Fuss Is About, because it is a really nice highlighter. If you're a big fan of the Gemma Kid Dewy Glow All Over Radiance Cream in Iced Gold, I think that's what it was called, this is basically your powder version of it. So I'm just going to take that again on the Bobbi Brown Sheer Powder Brush, and then I'm just going to dab that over the tops of the cheeks. Not too much, but because we're going very matte on the eyes and on the lips, it's quite nice just to have a bit of shine somewhere in the makeup. I'm going to go in on my brows with the Anastasia Brow Wiz in the shade Soft Brown, which is actually just my favourite brow product of all these days. I think it's great. I think the spoolie on the end is fabulous. And then I just think the colour, which originally I had a few issues with, is actually a good match for me. And I love the tininess of the nib because it just means you can really really precisely add definition into your brows. So as always, I'm going to do my good brow first, which is this one, and then sort of try and match it up to my bad brow, which is this one as well. And I recently watched a video on Sally Hughes's YouTube channel with Mary Greenwell in it, and Mary Greenwell was talking all things brows, and I feel like I learned a lot from that video. Mary Greenwell was basically saying, add colour and shading onto the top of your eyebrow, not the bottom, because it can bring it down and make it look a bit droopy. So I've definitely been following that tip and I've been trying to add more bulk to the tops of my brows rather than the bottom and she said instead of bringing them down more this way you should try and bring them out as much as you can. I will link this video below because it's great, it's about 20 minutes long, have it while you're eating your Cocoa Pops in the morning, it's great stuff. I think we're there but I can never actually tell with my brows because I've just got a tiny little screen that I can see there and when I look in it I always look a bit like Helga from Hey Arnold so I think it's okay so now I'm just going to move on to my eyes and the first thing I'm going to do is curl my lashes with the Shu Amura eyelash curlers, give them a few pumps. Now I'm just popping a dab of the NARS Pro Prime Smudge Proof Eyeshadow Base on my lids and this will just help everything stay in place because I have extremely oily eyelids at all times of the year. <laughs> Moving on to eyeshadow, and recently I've become quite fond of a matte look on the eye. So just using matte shadows, it looks very natural, and it just creates a very natural shadow and a natural definition to the lid. And I kind of like that. So for that, I'm going to use the original and the best, in my opinion, Naked Palette. A lot of people always ask, I get a lot of tweets on that, what's your favourite Urban Decay Naked Palette? The original. It's actually quite battered for me. <laughs> I just really like the colours, the tones, the textures, and Naked and Buck, the two kind of lighter matte ones here, are the ones that we're going to go for today. I'm going to pop Naked all over the lid, and then a bit of Buck in the crease, and then I'm going to pop a bit of eyeliner on as well, but we will get to that. So I'm just going to use the MAC 242 brush in to Naked, and I'm just applying that all over my lid. And I actually use this colour quite a lot, when I want something on my eyes that almost doesn't look like there's something on my eyes, this is what I go for. It's just a very nice sandy brown shade. Then I'm just going to blend that out with a MAC 217 brush. You probably can't even tell that I've got it on. It's that subtle, so I'm just going to match it up with the other eye. So once that's all blended, I'm going to move on to Buck. Now Buck is a great shade. It's almost a bit MAC textury in the way that there's almost like a ready kind of tone to it and it just warms up the socket nicely but doesn't look too in your face. It still looks very natural. So I'm just taking some of that on a MAC 217 brush and I'm just going to blend that more through the outer corner. And then as with all my eyeshadow looks, out comes the Bobbi Brown Eye Blender and I'm just giving that a little dusting in the crease, praying that there isn't some dark eyeshadow on it that I haven't washed off, and that just helps to finish off the look and make it look very seamless and professionally applied even though I'm awful at applying my shadow. I've been going on about these eye pencils for ages. They're from Charlotte Tilbury and they're their Rock and Coal Iconic Liquid Eye Pencil and I had this in the shade Marlene Midnight. If you remember, I think that was a makeup menu a few menus back where I did a blue liner look 
absolutely adore that shade. And now I finally picked up the brown, it's the Barbarella brown, and it is amazing. It's very cocoa, it's very rich, there's no shimmer in it at all, it is a straight up dark chocolate brown, which is a great way of adding definition without going for your usual black. So I'm just going to pop the tiniest amount of this on the outer kind of third of my eyelid. For mascara I'm going to go for my current favourite which is still the Fairy Drops Scandal Queen mascara and like I've mentioned before you can pick this up in Beauty Mart which I actually found in my local top shop. They had a little concession at the back but they are in Harvey Nichols I think if you are in London. I went for top and bottom lash lines there and then for lips like I said you've got two options here so kind of on a daily basis when I can't really be bothered to touch things up quite frequently and I just want something quite moisturising on my lips because just during the colder months, my lips just shrivel up into prunes. I've been using this from Fresh and it is their Sugar Berry Lip Balm or Tinted Lip Treatment, which is a gorgeous plum berry shade. It's very sheer and very easy to apply. I literally just throw that on, do a bit of that, done. I've just whipped off the fresh so that I can show you my slightly more bolder, there's a bit more work involved, but I do think it is worth the faff because I love the finish and I love the look and the colour of this. It's one of L'Oreal's new Colour Riche lipsticks and it's in the shade Julianne's Pure Red. They've got all of these different reds for different celebs. I went for Julianne's. I really like the colour of this. It's like a bright raspberry pinky red and the way that I like to wear it is just patted into my lips so I literally just dab the colour in, oh this is hard to squeak and do at the same time, so I've just dabbed in the colour and then I just sort of smush it in with my finger. And I really like the look of it, it's a very stained, very natural look, you can't see the lipstick sitting on top of the lips, it's very like moulded in. And I just love that kind of worked in stained finish with the very blurred edges so it doesn't look too put on or obvious, it's just a very natural way to wear bold lip colours. So that is the finished look, I really hope you enjoyed this little makeup menu, I'm sure there will be another one a few more weeks down the line. But thank you so much for watching and I will see you on Tuesday with a brand new weekly vlog. Bye.